Good morning, afternoon, evening, everybody. My name is Mike at Filmboy24, and today we're going to break it down. Break it down. Break down, not break it down, break down this camera. Well, we're going to review it. It's the Shannon 20 PXL. That's right. Today is all about this beauty right here. This little gem that I like to call the Shannon 20 PXL. And it's a good thing because that's what the company wanted to call it as well. We're gonna break this bad boy down and I'm gonna show you a little bit of footage that my wife shot. I was filming her filming things. She used this camera, I used a different camera, and today we're gonna learn everything there is to learn about this. And the very first thing we're gonna learn is weight. Weighs about 38 ounces, which is equivalent to about 1,100 grams. And that's all in with everything on it, with the cartridge, the batteries, the little microphone. It's not a heavy camera, but there are lighter ones. But as far as the features go, it's got some pretty cool ones. Let me move the box and the earpiece that I'm going to show you in one second. Like I say, my wife used this camera and she shot this roll right here of 7203 Vision 350D. Settled. You know what? You just stay down there for now. There's the roll. There's the actual film. And we're going to check that out here in just a minute. But let me go through some of the other things and features that you can expect with this camera. It does boast the Shinon, Shinon's brand, zoom lens. Now, this is the 20 PXL, and typically in, in the model numbers of these cameras, you can get the zoom ratio. 20 meaning 2 to 1 zoom ratio. This is 11 to 22 millimeter zoom lens. It will open up to f1.3, which is relatively fast, uh, which also coincides with its XL feature. Now, XL simply means existing light. Typically, the shutter opening was wider to allow more light in, and the lens was a little bit faster than some of the non-XL cameras. This camera also has a fixed focus. In other words, you don't, there's no focusing this camera. So everything from about roughly five feet or about a meter and a half be and beyond should be in pretty darn good focus without doing anything. So as far as a good run and gun camera, yeah, it's a pretty good run and gun camera. Now it is a sound camera. And what I mean by that is back in the day, in the olden days, Kodak made sound cartridges. This is a silent cartridge. A sound cartridge is a little bit longer because the film would protrude, protrude, down the bottom of the cartridge where there was an opening and your camera had a corresponding sound recording head right here on the bottom. And your audio was recorded 18 frames in front of your picture. Well, we don't really use sound film anymore unless you have some old stock and you wanna use it and have fun with it like I do occasionally. We use silent film. This camera works just fine with silent film. Now, some people aren't huge fans of using these sound cameras because, well, it's, it's one more element in your camera that can go wrong. And sometimes these little, these little sound heads can interfere to some degree with the mechanics of the camera. Not really the case with this particular one. This one I have pretty good luck with. Uh, it does only meter film, realistically meters film, and it, there's a gauge right inside. ASA, which is considered ISO now, uh, 25 to 100 in the daylight realm, so without using a filter, and then in artificial light or what they call yellow or tungsten light, it would meter from ASA 40 up to ASA 160. So with that, most modern film stocks will work in this camera, especially the vision stocks, because there's so much latitude with those. I know some people have sort of trepidation about shooting 500T in cameras like this that are really only made to meter up to about 200 ISO. 
I've shot plenty of 500T and these kinds of cameras. And with a little tweaking in post, usually you get pretty decent results. Now this camera is auto exposure only. It's not one of my favorite features, but this only does auto exposure. You can't do anything manually except for your backlight control, which is this little button right here on the top. Now I should say backlight compensation. Some people call it control. What it does essentially is it gives you one extra stop of light into your lens. So let's say for example, your camera is telling you you need to shoot at F8. Well, when you hold this in right there, your meter is gonna bounce down to F5.6. So it's gonna open up your iris just a little bit, which is quite helpful when you're using a camera that has no manual exposure. In fact, oftentimes if I'm shooting expired film with this camera, I'll just hold my hand on top and I will hold that button in while I'm filming. It's actually in a pretty good location to be able to do that, but there's, it doesn't stay, it's on a spring button. So when you let go, you disengage it. Speaking of disengaging, it's pretty neat that this camera, it does have a folding handle and there's a release right here on the back side of the handle up in the hinge area. You push that in ugh, and your handle folds forward. Now, when you fold the handle up, your batteries become disengaged from the circuitry in your camera. So you're no longer killing your batteries. Likewise, when you pull the trigger on the camera, I don't have batteries in it now, but when you pull the trigger on the camera or the shutter release, when you let go, your little red light stays on uh, for a couple of seconds. And when it goes off, the power is essentially turned off from your camera, which is a nice power saving feature. But to fully disengage the batteries from the circuit board, just fold the handle up. It's that simple. And the handle does fold down and click and lock into place. Speaking of the handle, inside, there is a slide, a little slide on the bottom, lift up, and it takes four, count them, four AA sized batteries right inside the handle. The only way to zoom on this camera is right here with this little sort of auto manual feature. I don't know what, what really to call it because you're doing it manly, manu, manly, manually by pushing down and pulling up or vice versa. You cannot zoom in and out by turning the lens. It's locked. The only way to zoom in wide in telephoto is to use this rocker switch on the side. This also has this little green button right here. They call this the auto magic monitor button. Auto magic monitor button. What this, all this really does is when you push this button in, it tests your batteries. There's a battery light or a battery symbol here and a little green light will come on. And it also, there's a little sun symbol. So if your filter is engaged, when you push this button, you want to know that your, your daylight filter is engaged and your batteries are good. So both of these lights will illuminate, hopefully, when you push this button, when you have your, your tungsten balanced film in and you want your filter to be engaged. This little red light right here on the side, that light will engage or it will flash or turn on uh, when you're running your film, that lets you know that everything is running as it should or recording, recording as it should. Now, as far as the filter engage switch, right here on the other side, there's your switch. It's a little panel or a little rocker that goes back and forth. When you see the sun, the sun right there means that your filter is engaged. Slide it over to the little bulb and that means you've just moved that 85, that orange filter, out of the way. So if you're shooting inside under yellow light with tungsten balanced film, you would put this, they, that little symbol sort of was supposed to mean you're in normal bulb lighting. And when you take your tungsten balanced film outside into the blue daylight, you switch it over to the daylight, the little sun, and now you have the filter that blocks those rays and your film doesn't turn out all blue, it turns out a natural beautiful color. Now you may have noticed this goofy thing on top of the camera as I'm moving it around. This is a little uh, shotgun type microphone. It simply unscrews and we'll do it in a second. But this, like I said earlier, is a sound recording camera. And look at this, whoop, you get a little range of boom mic. Doo -doo. Now this was an accessory that was included with these cameras, much like this little earpiece, like this little 70s style secret service earpiece so that you could plug into the 
ear monitor button right here or monitor socket right here. You would plug this in right there into the side, pop this little secret service earpiece in, and then when you pull the trigger and you're recording, you should be able to hear everything that's going into your microphone. Speaking of microphone, you could also have external microphones. And there was, it's, it was a little two-pronger, but you could use the single 3.5 plug right here and use a, an external microphone for this. Now, I will say this and this really aren't used much anymore, unless, like, like I said earlier, you have some old sound film that you want to experiment with. There's a little dial right here. As you twist this dial, it's unscrewing this microphone from the top of the camera, lift it straight up, and there's little prongs on the bottom and a little receptacle for the said prongs right there on top. So it just goes in and makes the connection, the electrical connection, and allows this microphone to pick up the audio and record it onto your film. We also have, let me unplug the Secret Service device, we also have a standard footage counter right here. Now when you first put your cartridge in, this little half circle will be green, and as you shoot, this little half circle over here, it'll start filling up red. When it's completely red, that means your film is done. Speaking of that, the viewfinder. Inside, when you look through this eyepiece that also has an adjustable diopter for people like me that wear glasses, you just unscrew the inner ring right here a little bit and then start twisting counterclockwise or clockwise on the, the, the eye cup here until you can see the ground glass in there clearly and then you tighten the inner ring again and then you should, for people like me that wear glasses, you should be able to see just fine without your glasses. So inside, like I was saying earlier, on the viewfinder itself or inside when you look on the panel itself, there are some things in there as well. On the very top, you have your F scale range. Now that range, and there's a needle, and that tells you, that little needle is telling you whether or not you're good or you're bad. If you underexpose, if you don't have enough light, that needle is going to swing all the way to the left into the red, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to warn you, hey, you don't have enough light. Kick it up a notch. So you put these blasters on it, and then all of a sudden, your needle swings to the other side into the red, and that's telling you you got too much light. You want it, you know, right there in the middle. You, you want to keep it, you guys know how to use f-stops, hopefully, but you want it inside those two red warning areas. Warning areas. Now, just to the right of the frame, there will be a green light if you're using sound film that will flicker to let you know that the sound is recording properly onto your film. It doesn't really work so much, or it's not really needed, again, because we don't really shoot sound film in these cameras anymore. Bottom left, there will be a black dot that sort of flickers as you're running your film. That tells you that your film is transporting properly. If you don't see that thing flickering, if it's just solid, then you know there's an issue with the camera or with the film. You need to fix it. Now in the bottom right, bottom right, next to that everything is going fine indicator, there's another little round circle. Now it'll be just a little clear circle until you get almost to the end of your roll of film. With about three feet of film to go, that little circle will start turning red from the bottom up. So you'll start seeing a little bit of red, a little bit of red, and then when you finally get to the end of the cartridge, that little circle, and I just mean a little button indicator, will be completely solid red. Cut it off. You've finished your film. And that's it. I mean, that's about all there is to know. Like I say, the little microphone, you really probably can put that on the shelf because most people are not going to use that. That's, there's not a whole lot more to it. It does have a handy handle and a quarter 20 socket for a tripod right there. Let me tell you about the footage real quick. So my wife and I, I had my Canon 514XL and I put a brand new roll of Ektachrome 100D, the 7294 stuff in that. And I did that video a couple weeks ago. And we, her and I went to one of my little local hotspots where I like to go and test films and cameras and things like that. 
Sugar Mill Gardens. I loaded her camera up with this, the 50D, a new roll, 7203. I don't know how new it actually was, but new to me. So we put that in there and she went out and I will tell you, she's not much of a film girl, right? She doesn't do a lot of filming. So, you know, she's kind of like this a little bit, bless her, you know. She does the best she could. She's such a trooper. She will do anything that I beg her to do, um, especially in this film world. So, so we had a lot of fun. She had fun doing this, uh, but that's the footage that I have to show you. So without too much more of this, you know a lot about the camera now. Here's the footage that she got at Sugar Mill Gardens. So there's her footage. Not bad. I mean, like I say, she shoots maybe two rolls of film a year. One thing I forgot to mention, this is an all plastic bodied camera, uh, so don't drop it. It's not metal like some cameras, but even metal cameras you probably don't want to drop. If you have any questions regarding this camera, I've had this one for a long time. I do have the original box, most of the original accessories, and I do have the original rib, rib the original manual for this camera as well. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them right down there in the comment section, and I'll do my very best to answer them. I answer most every comment on the planet that comes into my channel. As long as I see it, I will answer it one way or another. If you like this little breakdown video, can you please do me a favor? That's it right there. Hit the, uh, hit the like button for me. It's free. It helps this channel. It does. It helps the metrics, the metric system, YouTube system. Uh, and it keeps me motivated. It lets me know that people actually care a little bit about my videos. If you think I've earned it, earned it, maybe you could uh, subscribe. I got a new found film. It's a cameraman Mike's found film coming up. It's a sound found film. 
coming up next. So if you're interested in seeing that, it's a really old film that was never processed and it was shot by strangers and we didn't know what was on it. Well, I know now. So you'll see that coming up really soon. If you're subscribed, you won't miss it. One thing I did forget to mention, I did process and scan this film myself. This is not professionally processed or professionally scanned. So give me a little break. And until the very next time that we, you know, do something pretty goofy and that I see or at least envision all of your beautiful faces, all of them, even you, you know who you are. There it is. Whoa, that one went way deep. That was weird. I'll see all of you on the very next go around.